From Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first are the Korea and Kandakar families from Mississauga, Ontario, and their dear friends, in memory of Mrs. Beliza Korea and the deceased members of the family on the first anniversary of her death. The second is Mary Olito from Toronto, Ontario, for seniors who are alone and suffering. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Joining me in this celebration of today's Mass is Deacon David Wall. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we begin our celebration of the Holy Eucharist, let us begin first now by acknowledging our sins and preparing ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and of a kind that is not found even among pagans. For a man is living with his father's wife, and you are so arrogant. Should you not rather have mourned so that he who has done this would have been removed from among you? For though absent in body, I am present in spirit. And as if present, I have already pronounced judgment in the name of the Lord Jesus on the man who has done such a thing. When you are assembled, and my spirit is present with the power of our Lord Jesus, you are to hand this man over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, so that his spirit may be saved on the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not a good thing. Do you not know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? Clean out the old yeast so that you may be a new batch, as you are already unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the festival, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and evil, but rather with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure the cure on the Sabbath, so that they might find an accusation against him. Even though Jesus knew what they were thinking, he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come and stand here. He got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to destroy it? After looking around at all of them, Jesus said to him, stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. But they were filled with fury and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Who among us isn't in need of healing from something? Perhaps it's healing from a suffering body, a suffering soul, a broken heart. Perhaps it's healing in a suffering relationship, a suffering marriage. Perhaps at different times in our lives, it's more than one or all of the above. We can find courage and take hope, my friends. Today's gospel offers us this. Jesus wants to heal us at all costs. We hear of the lengths to which Jesus, our Lord, will go to, to be there for us. That's good news, the gospel. It's also something that we can depend upon. Jesus contends with the hardened hearts of those with a legalistic attitude around him, people who can't see beyond themselves. There are times when we should consider this kind of attitude and speak against the legalism that we can all be entrapped in if we're not careful, but not today. Today, the point I offer for all of us to ponder is this. Look at how far our Lord and Savior will go to encounter us. Jesus wants us to bring our brokenness and suffering to him with confident faith and steadfastly trust him, and everything will be okay and we will be made well. Jesus was not afraid of those who opposed him, and we know that there were enough of these kind of encounters that eventually it led to his crucifixion. But he did not relent or retreat from being there for those who had faith and trusted him. Jesus called the man with the withering hand to come forward in today's gospel and healed him. Jesus calls us forward, too. And we believe, we truly believe, that Jesus is no less present to us and for us than he was in Galilee and Jerusalem all those years ago. So what stands in the way of our faith and trust that he will heal us? Why are there so many of us not answering the Lord's call today? He is calling us to great things, to living out of our vocation, whatever that may be, whatever that is. But he is also calling us to himself that he might take away what ails us, our brokenness, our sufferings, what makes us less than all we can be for him and for others. And what stands in our way is fear. Fear stands in the way. Fear weakens our faith. Fear is an obstacle to our trusting at all, let alone trusting the Lord. Among the people with the greatest faith, that I've met are people lying in hospital beds. I've anointed and heard confessions of many people in hospital rooms, people who were all too aware of very grim medical prognoses and feeling the pain of what ailed them. The great sign of faith with the sick and suffering, more often than not, is how they face their sickness or disease with courage and faith, 
with a deep hope and trust in the Lord. How they encountered Jesus amid their own suffering, asking to understand its purpose in his loving and providential plan. Not merely to avoid what they face, but to be free of the burden of what holds them back from being who God created them to be, so that they might give greater witness to the glory of God. I don't know about you, but that freedom in faith is something I very much want in my life. That freedom of faith is something that I hope to be growing in day by day. And that freedom is something that gives me the strength to face my own fears and to come to Jesus. My friends in Christ, let us stop and think about our own lives, asking ourselves what fears hold us back from approaching Jesus with our suffering, our brokenness, our weaknesses. What fears ca cause us to give less to God or in our faith? And may we be assured by our Lord himself that he frees us of what holds us back, away from him that we might live and true freedom of his people. May God bless you. We turn our hearts and minds to God, asking him to hear our prayers. For Pope Francis, all bishops, priests, deacons, and religious, that they may always abound in works of faith, hope, and love in your service. We pray to the Lord. For all our faithful baptized in Christ and anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit as God's holy and priestly people, they will spread the good news of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. For those here at our daily Mass and those in our TV audience who have asked us to be remembered in our prayers, we ask the Lord to comfort those living with grief, help them to see the light of heaven. Come embrace those in pain and physical suffering. May they feel close to you. Watch over those isolated and alone. Calm their fears and lead them close to you. We pray to the Lord. For our own intentions that are in the depth of our heart, We pray to the Lord. Lord our God, you teach us to put our trust in you alone. When the way seems difficult, help us to remember that with you all things are possible. We make our prayer through him who is your wisdom and power, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash me my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Thanks. Thank you, gentlemen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Our Father who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer for the dying? O oh God, most kind, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, whose will it is that no one who believes and hopes in you should perish. With your boundless mercy, look with kindness on your servants, for true faith and Christian hope commend them to you. Come to them in your saving power, and because of the passion and death of your only Son, be pleased to grant them remission and pardon of all their sins, so that their souls, when they leave this life, cleansed of every stain by the blood of your Son, may enter into life everlasting. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just before the final blessing, I want to uh, say another thank you to all of those of you who've joined us here at the Abbey, but also on TV for our Mass today. As you know, when I celebrate this Mass, I always ask for prayers for vocations. We have to pray for 
vocations especially to priesthood, religious life, and to the vocation of marriage. But I also want to share with you just very quickly a couple of the the guests, including Deacon uh, Dave, who's here with us today, and his wife and a good friend of mine, who've come all the way down from Wasaga Beach to be here. I mention that because they were instrumental and very important in my own vocational discernment, so I'm glad to be able to have them here with me and with us for this celebration of the Mass today. And the Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our two donors for the gift of this Mass. months, everything slows down a little, including our mail. Everything that is except our expenses in broadcasting the daily mass. Winter, fall, summer, spring, they say the same. So do keep us in mind, and remember, whatever you can send us will help keep daily mass on television.